Good evening, my name is Garrett, and welcome to Last Call. Tonight's final drink is from Blackened. This is Rye the Lightning, coming in at a 45% ABV, no age statement. Now, I'm a huge fan of Blackened. Hell, I've got all the bottles so far, and it's one of the brands, especially in the celebrity space, that I think does a great job. I love the idea, I love the process, and I love what they do with their flavors. And again, coming from a celebrity brand, really knocks my socks off for all things intended. So this, however, is their play on a rye whiskey. So they take two different ryes, one of a high rye, one of a low rye blend, blend them together, put them into Madeira casks and rum casks. So you're instantly, your, your wheels are spinning and you're going, oh, is this an Angel's Envy replacement? Well, I've already tried it so I can kind of allude to things, but we'll talk about that when we get there. But they do all that, then they do their sound process or their blackened process where they knock in music, Metallica music. And I think it comes from their album, Ride the Lightning, if I remember right. So they have a playlist, go with that, agitating the barrels to really supposedly change up the taste profile. And all things considered, it probably does something, but I don't know what. It, uh, that's far out of my, my realm of knowledge. But essentially, you'll have more whiskey in contact with more barrel versus it just sitting stagnant, not moving or agitating. So as always, we'll be trying it two different ways. First way, neat, no ice, no water. Second way, we'll add a drop of water, see what changes up. But a buddy of mine, huge fan of the Black and it actually was one of his whiskeys that he got started with. Uh, so I already took it over there and we uh, cracked this open because uh, I knew I needed to. <laughs> Love the color. I love going with the green versus the black to kind of show that little bit of difference. Beautiful golden color on there. Looks great. Little golden yellow going on. Well, let's go for notes. Uh, definitely the great thing about this one is going with the Kentucky rye, you're not getting a whole bunch of the medicinal herbal that sometimes like MGP can bring. You do get that rice spice in there, but the things that are coming across very well for me, getting that beautiful dark fruit from that Madeira cask, and then you're getting this rum sweetness going on. ABV does show up a little bit, but it's not super pungent. Getting that dark, rich fruit but that rum cask is playing so well with it. Yeah, I just love that. All right, let's go for taste. Mm. Mm. Going with both the Madeira and the rum cask, even on the taste, you're getting this punchy dark fruit but you're also getting this super sweet of that rum cask. If you like the Angel's Envy rye, shocker, this isn't going to replace that. Uh, that one is a completely different beast compared to this, but it does a good job in its own right. So getting a bit of that spice, a little bit of sweetness from that rum cask shows up almost instantly. Here in the mid palette, I'm getting a bit of those dark fruits, like a dark plum or figs. It's like a dark orchard fruit, kind of like that. A little bit of sweetness shows up there as well, almost like a honey sweetness. I'm getting a bit of those spices as well here, like clove and cinnamons, things like that. Very, not quite Christmas-like, but they're there. You get some nice, simple spice going on. But right from the get-go, you can tell this is a rye. You get that punchy rye at the beginning, but then it shifts with those dark fruits, that, that rum influence there. And then it wraps itself up with a nice bow, just going nice, spicy, sweet going on. It's really good. Mm. And then even here in the finish, you're still getting a, just a little pinch of that dark fruit going on. 
Let's try a little bit of water, see what changes up. Mm. Okay, let's go for notes. ABV does show up a little bit, but honestly, it's very similar. Still getting that nice spice, getting a bit of that sweetness going on there, especially the, the caramel and honeys. The rum influence is still showing up. The branding, that rum influence is show, still showing up here. The uh, Madeira cask isn't quite as pungent, but it is still there vaguely. It's almost like the uh, expired fruit note that I always like to point out. Like, you pick up a fruit, you, you squeeze it, and you're like, mm. I don't think it's a squeeze like that. You take a bite of it, and you're go, it still tastes good? But I don't know if I should be eating this. It's teetering that note. Let's go for taste. Drinks very light now. But that, it does get a, just a little metallic in there. The rum is, and I think the rum cask is saving it from going too metallic. It's bringing back that sweetness. It's pulling the reins back on that a bit. So you still get the honey at the beginning, a little bit of spice, and then that metallicness is starting to show up, that almost, almost off-putting. Honey, spice, and then that metallic kind of starts to show up here. And you're like, ooh, I'm getting kind of worried. But then the the rum cask pulls back on those reins, brings in that sweetness, the bit of rum spice going on there. A little bit of oak. And it does go a little more dry here at the end. Well, probably from that Madeira cask, if I had a guess. You're still getting a bit of that fruit, but it's not as much dark fruit as it is just more simplistic fruit note. It's not bad. I think Neat has a lot of those characters that you're going to be looking for in this one. As always, it doesn't matter what you drink or how you drink it, as long as you enjoy it. But I think the Neat version definitely has the characters on there. All right, let's talk about market price because we all know market price is market price. And it's always going to vary. Picked this up for $75, and from what I can see online, that's a pretty good steal. Most places are selling this right around $100 to $110. I think for $100, $110, it's not worth that. Um, at $75, you know, if you liked Blackened and you liked their cask strength, and to kind of put those in perspective on price, uh, Blackened can usually be found between $40 and $45. Their cast strength version can usually be found right around the uh, $55 to $65 range, usually in about $65 more normally. This going up to $75, you're, you know, as rye whiskeys tend to do, they tend to bring a higher value on their labeling. I think it's damn good. I wouldn't overpay for it. I think if you're a Blackened fan, maybe $80, I would be safe saying that you should still try this. But do understand that this isn't going to be like your other ones because this is rye. You're going to get a lot different flavor profiles going on there compared to your standard blackened. I think it's good. I would love to see a cask strength version of this come out as well. Fingers crossed they do that because I definitely will look for a bottle of it. But I don't. I wouldn't pay hundred dollars plus for it. I mean, I paid. I paid just over a hundred. I think it was about one twenty for the uh, the Willet version. Uh, so when you're teetering that price point on that one, I don't think I would go that high. But it's 75 bucks. If you could find that, I think it's a pretty solid buy. So yeah, there you have it. Blackened Ride the Lightning. If you have any questions about the bottle itself, let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer it. And if you have any specific spirits to go looking for, let me know down in the comment section below. I am always on the hunt for something unique and fun to share with you at home. And as always... May your last trick of the night be the best one.